All right, so here at Bonic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. Where did your passion from writing kind of come from? Was a certain book inspired or something that was natural for you as a child? Okay, so I was always good in English, terrible in math and French. I was always in English honor classes. But when I was 16, I met somebody who owned the Federation Trading Post in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And he was a writer. And so he kind of coaxed me into starting to write professionally. But writing is not a gift. It's learned. The more you write, the better you get. The easier it comes. And the more you practice like a musical instrument, just the, the better that you get. I never thought of it that way. It's pretty interesting, actually. <laughs> I, never, I love that, though. So when, well, did you, when did you first start writing, though? Like, as young as you can remember? Or? Well, I started writing professionally when mm. I was 16 with, with this Federation trading post man. His name was Ron Barlow, and he did all the Star Trek conventions and the comic book conventions and sci-fi conventions. And he owned or ma actually he owned or managed them. I'm, I'm not really sure which the Federation trading post and they were coming out with a Star Trek giant poster book. And I was the only girl that wrote for it. And it was, it was kind of cool. And what it was, was it was a, um, I'll show you. I actually have one. Is this before the medical referral manual? It, this was during the same time. Okay, cool. Kind of before, yeah. But kind of during. Yeah. So it looked like this. Oh, uh, that's awesome. And, wait, and then it opened up like this. <laughs> and then it opened up into a giant. Oh, poster. wow. Reminds me of like those like band magazines that always had like a folding mm -hmm. poster. I love that. So, so cool. So and what that did you write, the, write in those then? Well, it depended. I had like a like a a fangirl crush on Spock, all in it anymore. I'm not really sure which one. Yeah. And so my first interview, my first celebrity interview ever in life was Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> That's a good way to start. <laughs> it was a really good way to start. And I remember the interview. I didn't know anything. I mean, I used the tape recorder. That's how long ago it was, you know, like, <laughs> like with the tape. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I remember sitting on my kitchen floor and waiting for him to call. And I remember my heart like pounding out of my chest. Like I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't even have questions. I mean, I had some questions prepared, but you know, everyone said, just make it a conversation. So I said, Oh my God. And then when he did call, we wound up staying on the phone for over an hour. So, so and cool. then I had to write the thing up and, and then I wound up meeting him. And the first thing he said was, oh, I remember you. You were the one with the really long interview. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least he remembered you. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I loved writing after that. You can just imagine. Oh, I bet. And then I just, I took a break for a while to have like kids and a husband. And then I divorced the husband and I really started writing. Okay. Well, I want to go back to uh, the, Star, the Starfleet okay. medical reference manual. You worked with Star Trek production staffer Jeffrey Mandel. How did you get hooked up with him for this? You know? Jeffrey <laughs> Mandel and Doug Drexler actually helped me write the okay. book. And I have it. I actually have it right here. See it? How cool it was? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I did the editing and the writing. And, and Jeffrey was really talented. He did all of the... Um, the the technical work. The I mean, he made here. He actually made aliens. Yeah, that's what makes it so cool about that. There's all see the there? diagrams in there of all the different aliens from the Star Trek. Universe. Yeah, and they wound up using the book years later for the last Star Trek movie. They wound up using it um, as a reference for a um, a Romulan or or a Vulcan anatomy. I, I forget which, but the director wound up using it as a reference. For that. Oh, so cool. that, I didn't know that. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I wound up interviewing him and he said, Oh my God, I used that book. <laughs> 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 so that was, that was kind of cool too. And what happened was I was going to nursing school mm -hmm. and I was going to college and I, I was like young for college. 
because of English. <laughs> I was young for college. It was my first year. But, you know, I had nursing courses already. Mm-hmm. And I was the only person that knew anything medical. And Ron Barlow and Jeff and, and, and Doug, they were like, they had this brilliant idea. Let's do, let's do the Star Trek medical reference manual. And I said, oh, how nice for you. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, good, because you're writing it. So I did. And, you know, and they helped. They did all the pictures, all the technical work. But I did the scientific work and the medical work. We, we did our own um, periodic table. Yeah. Of the future. And we did our own anatomy. And, and we had lessons on how to, like, if, if an alien's choking, like, <laughs> like how to do that. We had everything in it. How to resuscitate an alien. How to <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. we, asked, um, we asked Dr. McCoy if he would just, you know, just put his stamp on it, you know, just say something. And he said, nope. <laughs> so <laughs> that was that. But Paramount licensed it. Yeah. And um, Ballantyne Books distributed it. So it, it was pretty out there. It was pretty, pretty much out there. I love it. So then you, I guess you got married, took a break. And then you kind of came back, was writing, and right? In between, in between that, like before I got married, Star Wars came out. So we also wrote for Star oh, Wars. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, please talk about Star Wars. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. You know? Star Wars was like so ahead of its time. And yeah. we, I mean, we did the trivia questions for all the conventions, the Star Wars, Star Trek, all of that. I remember we were on Toronto television. And I mean, the trivia contest, it was 100 questions that we had to make up. So myself, Ron, Doug, and Jeff would sit, th- would sit up nights and make up these questions. And, you know, some people knew 100 questions, 100 wow. answers. Wow. It was I great. I thought it was really knowledgeable of Star Wars, so I did a lot of those, like, question things. And I'm like, okay, I don't know that one. <laughs> 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 the Bravo, whoever got 100 out of 100. <laughs> there you go. I was, I was knowledgeable about Star Trek because I was kind of mm. uh, forced into it. <laughs> Of course. (laughs) But, you know, it was a great time in my life. It was great experience writing. And it was something that not everybody did, especially if you were a girl. Oh, I bet. This was like a technical thing for like boys. Mm -hmm. And and Jeff was a genius. Jeff Mandel was like a genius. And Doug Drexler was a genius. I actually think he won some kind of Grammy or Oscar or something like you know, like a couple of years back. Nice. And, um, and actually Ron Ballo is some kind of artist right now. Um, he just recently, maybe a year ago, contacted me on Facebook. <laughs> so that we- <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing about social media, though. You can catch up with uh, old friends. You can. Like that, you, know? you can find all your friends that you used to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so, love it. Yeah, and Star Wars was great. Star Wars was easy. It was a Star Wars, it was almost like a newspaper. And I think okay. it came out once a week. Uh huh. What, what was it called? It was just like a Star Wars. Okay. You know, it was a magazine, or, you know, it, it came, it looked like a newspaper, black and uh-huh. white, looked like a newspaper. And, uh, you know, we wrote different articles, we interviewed people. I never, I actually nice. never had to interview anyone from Star Wars, you know, I, I, I knew all the Star Trek people. A uh, matter of fact, uh, Nichelle Nichols, we once um, slept in her room at the Playboy Club because her, <laughs> her son was performing and she needed, she wanted an audience. So she's like, you just gonna stay here. Oh my goodness. It's funny, I got to interview her once at dressed as Kylo Ren and a, a red carpet, a cosplay red carpet. So <laughs> she, That's cool. <laughs> she took my lightsaber. I'm like, uh-oh, you're switching sides. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. You know, later on, I, I did get to uh, interview Jolie Fisher. I mean, that's the closest I ever got to interviewing anyone uh, from, from Star Wars. But I, I did get to interview Mark Hamill once. I wasn't allowed to talk about Star Wars, but uh, he did do the Joker voice for me, and he touched me. So that was probably one of my favorite <laughs> interviews. <laughs> that's great. <Yeah. laughs> that's great. So uh, after I had kids, I got married. And yeah. then I, opened, I actually opened up a... Um, a gay bar uh-huh. with uh, one of my gay, well, actually my gay soulmate. We opened it up together and uh, people came in pitching their magazines. Oh, advertising this, advertising that. And we had cool people. We had RuPaul's drag queens there and stuff. Nice. 
Yeah. So in, instead of, you know, putting it in an ad, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll interview one of them. And I'll put it in your magazine. And he said, okay. So the best interviews that I've ever gotten were from Get It, the gay magazine, because everyone wants to be in that magazine. Everyone wants a gay fan base. So from that, I, I mean, I got Diana Ross. I got, I don't know. I got um, Jennifer Hudson, oh, Brooke Shields, cool. Emma Stone. And I, I mean, and the list goes on and on and mm -hmm. on. Well, speaking of gay drag queens, you have a book on Precious Little Devils that's you know, another great thing I love about you is you're very passionate about rock, rock, rock and roll and music, just like me, as much as we both are dorks like Star Trek and Star Wars. We do mm -hmm. rock and roll music. And this is a story about, uh, it's kind of like a, the Glee in like the 80s and like The Voice, American Idol kind of rolled in, but it's got one of the characters is a gay drag queen. Uh, tell, uh -huh. us about the, tell us about the book, you know? Well, that's, that book was really my passion. Mm -hmm. The new book that I have out was also a passion, but Precious Little Devils was, was a passion. I wish I lived that life. <laughs> you know, yeah. I almost lived the life, but not quite. And, and what it was, it was about kind of like where Glee met the voice mm -hmm. and where the voice met American Idol. So it was about rock bands that, you know, were in this contest. They tried out for... Um, to win, to win a, a recording contract. And um, they were led by mentors that, you know, were older and had been in the rock business. And it loosely, very loosely, you know, they, they were adamant, Billy Idol, <laughs> Billy Ocean, um, <laughs> Phil, um, Deborah Harry, you know, without, without saying, but yeah. the band itself, the band that, that my lead character in, except for her, was all gay. So it was kind of different. And I had gay chapters in it and straight chapters in it. And it, it was, that was my favorite, my favorite thing that I ever wrote in my life. Oh. Was there ever talk about turning it into like a movie or anything? I feel like that would make such a great, you know, musical they, with, or anything. You know? We're thinking of turning it into a web series, actually. Oh, I, I hope that happens. That would be great. Yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. Well, let's Actually, talk about you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's hard for you because, you you know, you, I have ex you're exactly the look of one of the people in the band. I swear to God. <laughs> so I, I used I, to play drums. So if there's a drumming part, I, maybe I can uh, get back into it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's, I, I played drums in high school and college, but then we started living in apartments and then like I had a, I had a town home, you know, connected to other people. It was just, you know. But my new house, eventually, I hope to get electric kit because I won't be connected to anyone anymore. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk about your new book. This just came out last July. Waiting for Adam: Interviews and Obsessions. I assume this is about Adam and I assume, right? It is because <laughs> the reason the reason I started writing for Get Out magazine in the back of my head was because I wanted, I had to, not wanted, had to interview somehow get an interview with adam ant so i knew he didn't love the press yeah and i actually knew him before i got the interview i met him several times oh, cool. and i just never got an interview with him and he um he didn't really trust or love the press but yeah. finally i started writing for huff post and louder than war and they were acceptable magazines for him to be in plus by then i had the creds you know, the credentials. I, I interviewed practically everyone in the world. <laughs> yeah, and you talk about these interviews in the book too, right? So I talk about the interviews in the book, the side stories, and the actual interviews are in the book. So oh, if you that's cool. Them, they're there. And yeah. I also have a, a lot of pictures of a lot of people. So, you know, it's, it's kind of how I got started mm -hmm. in the business and how and I... You, yeah, you talk about your Star Trek. Well, we talked talk about a reference in there too, so... I do, I do, and uh, but the interviews are in the book, and even interviews they did after that are in the book, because oh. you know what life after Adam. Yeah. The sequel, the sequel is going to be waiting for Billy, as in Billy Idol. Oh, so, that would be cool. <laughs> so cool. Well, let's name the people you are in the book you've interviewed. You know, you got Diana Ross, I think Cindy Lauper, and who else? I have, um, I have the book right here. I'm going to yeah, tell yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> You've done I so have, many, Brian. For, <laughs> I, I have a lot of cool. I have Fran Drescher. 
I have, um, oh God, I have Emma Stone, Rachel White. I have my, uh, Michael Mustel, who uh, a lot of people don't know who he is, but he, he's in, like the head of New York nightlife. Oh, wow. And he worked for the Village Voice for like 30 years. And, and he hey, was my that's, scary. That's a big deal, interview. the Village Voice. <laughs> he was my scariest interview because he was not only a journalist, but he was the journalist. Yeah. And I thought he hated me at the time, so I was kind of nervous. But I interviewed Boy George, I interviewed Spandau Ballet, I interviewed Sandra Bernhard, Melissa Etheridge, Leanne mm -hmm. Rimes, uh, Tony Braxton, Kylie Minogue. Is there anyone you haven't, besides Billy Idol, I guess, you haven't interviewed yet that you want to, or? You know what? There's probably a lot of people that I should interview, <laughs> but I really, I wanted to interview Pink Floyd and then he became one of my clients for my PR company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott. So that worked. Um, he, and, he's amazing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. You know who I want to interview? I'll tell you. I want to interview Ringo Starr. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'll be a good one. I think you'll be yeah. really into it too, especially with like your past interviews. I can see him doing that, you know. Yeah, well, I interviewed Colin Hayes, and he—he's in the All Star Band. Mm -hmm. He was the um, uh, the Men Down Under, you know, the yeah. Australian. Oh yeah, yeah. So he was kind of cool, and I like to interview older rockers. And when I say older, I mean rock is from the 80s i loved the 80s mm -hmm. if i could have any time in life to do all over again it would be the 80s and i've interviewed almost you know like a good part of the 80s mm -hmm. but i've also interviewed lizzo and um i don't even remember his name but he was good <laughs> <laughs> you ever interview john bon jovi I, i'm obsessed with bon jovi i would i would yeah that's another one i haven't but i would yeah. really like to I would mm. really, really like to. He's I have a, I have a client who his name is Howard Bloom. Yeah. And oh, he he was one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. <laughs> right. I know. And he's one of my favorite people in life. He, yeah. um, my my gay soulmate Colin said you want to interview this guy. Maybe he'll teach you how. <laughs> maybe he'll teach you. He, your business. Uh, for those who don't know, he's a music publicist for the longest time, but he's like a. By Sarah, I don't know how to describe he's it. Into, he's, been, he's a scientist as well. Scientist, yeah, exactly. But yeah, he just breaks he things down program. like so amazingly. <laughs> he has a space program as well. Yes, um, that's right, yes. But I, he was like the biggest publicist on the planet. He represented everyone from Alice Cooper to Bob Marley to Billy Idol mm. to Billy Joel to Kiss, ACDC, um, Prince. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, of them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. So I really, and then he became a, like the greatest publicist in the world, hired us for PR. So that was exciting. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but he is a great interview. I, I, I love to, I keep interviewing him over and over again. So. Yeah, I had to I had to stop him because like you know Zoom, you only get like forty minutes, and then I was I like, know. I was like, oh, uh, sorry, man, I gotta cut you off. I think I only asked about like four questions, like, but he he just goes on these amazing stories and how he breaks everything down. I was like, my mind was blown. <laughs> you could probably I the first interview I ever did with him went over an hour, <laughs> and I and I couldn't stop him because he just wouldn't stop. So. <laughs> And I wound up doing it, I think, in two parts, because, I, I mean, it was long. It was really long. Well, speaking of long, I don't want this interview to be too long. So uh, where can people get your um, Stay Up to Date website, social media-wise, and pick up all your books? Okay, well, I have a Facebook page. I don't know the link, but look for Eileen Shapiro. You'll find me. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Barnes & Noble mm -hmm. and Waterhouse in England. And if you look at my Facebook page, I have a bunch of different links for all different countries. Um, and they just put Waiting for Adam on a movie, a horror movie. So <laughs> that's kind of cool, too. It's actually a prop in the movie, and the girl actually reads from it. Oh, so, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're doing some kind of contest, and you can win the book. Um, and um, so, I, I mean, you could pick it up almost anyway. The thing is, because of our situation, it's taking a long time to come. Yeah. So I just want 
like tell everyone like order it now because it's going to take a while yeah and well, so elaine thank you so much and we'll talk down the road we have future books or future projects or anything you know so. cool <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much thank you as well you have a great night take care Thanks. Thanks for watching everyone. Please support this video by giving it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. Thank you so much.